What is going on guys? It's Justin from the J Media back with another video. So today we receive a package, car parts, and it is the double din for the Mitsubishi Lancer platform. Uh, you can install it on your Mitsubishi Lancer, your Lancer Rally Art, your Lancer Evo, any 10th generation uh, Mitsubishi Lancer or Evo 10 you can install. So I've done this install quite a few times. Got this package from Amazon. Let's go ahead and open it up, check it out, and get it installed. All right, so first time opening up this box as well. If you guys have the OEM setup, or if you have, you know, a uh, different double din that you don't like, you want to get it swapped out, this is the perfect video to see a DIY. All right, so here's the packaging. You have your Apple CarPlay, navigation, <laughs> enjoy your life. Let's go ahead and open up the box, see what it looks like inside. So yeah, pretty much replaces the OEM head unit. You'll have your Bluetooth, you can do your Apple CarPlay. That's what we have here, nice screen. Should come with all the wires for the install as well. Okay, so this is the head unit that we're working with today. Have all the ports to connect everything to provided with wires so yeah pretty easy install process let's go ahead and get to installing everything and the car that we're working with today it's my Mitsubishi Lancer Rally Art Sportback so like I said any 10 gen Lancer Rally Art Evo you can install it let's go ahead and unlock the car and I do have an aftermarket double din in it right now so whether you have an aftermarket one or the OEM one, same thing. We'll show you guys the process on how to replace it. All right, first things first, we need to remove everything from here. So what you want to do is pop open your glove box. You not unclip it. There's a small little screw right here. That way this whole piece comes off and you can remove the head unit. All right, so I recommend doing it from the passenger side because on the driver's side, it's harder to reach. So first step. Go ahead and open the glove box you're gonna press it you're gonna pry open the glove box and get the glove box loose so you have more room to work with all right now that you have the glove box dangling all you need is a phillips screwdriver uh, there's one little screw right here once you remove that there's one more behind this piece so you don't really need any crazy tools Everything's pretty easy. Even for someone who has no mechanical experience, I would say this is a pretty easy mod you could do. If you keep your screws. And once that piece is removed, this whole piece, this whole plastic piece just pries right out. Screw number two. All right, so with screw one, screw two off, that whole plastic piece comes right out. Pretty easy comes right off it's just held on by clips now you're gonna slowly carefully pry this piece right here so you're gonna slowly pry it just like that comes right off be careful so once you have that piece off you guys could see this piece right here is pretty much held on by more screws so let's go ahead and take off all the screws Alright, so just two screws, one and two, holding this in place. So right now we have it unhooked like that. So this whole piece, this whole hit unit piece should come right off now. Alright, just like that, the whole hit unit is pretty much loose. You want to be careful and go ahead and unplug everything. Unplug all your wires. It's all clipped, so you just stick your finger in there, unclip it. 
Make sure to do every single one of them. Bunch of clips. Be careful because these things are pretty brittle. Okay, this is all done. All right, so I've pretty much all the other wires unhooked. The main one right here is this guy. So this is providing power and this is your factory harness, OEM harness. So this is the main one you want to unhook as well, unclip. All right, so we have the O1 out. I'm not going to sell it. I'm actually going to keep it. Um, probably put this one in my Mitsubishi Lancer show build. I'm going to try on this new head unit set here. And right now, you just have to remove the vents. Whenever you buy these head units, they never come with the vents. So you want to go ahead and flip it to the back. Same thing. Just held on by some clips. Pretty much everything is just clips or screws. So really easy and carefully remove it all right so we have one side out like i said all held in by clips other side pretty easy so all these clips you can see these black little tabs right here right here just everywhere so you can use your finger to kind of pry it out or if you're having trouble you could also pretty much use a flat tip screwdriver just kind of pry out these tabs all right gonna uh, unwrap this head unit so visually they look pretty much the same very similar in design obviously because it's meant for the car it's not a universal unit the main thing is these things range in price from you know like 150 dollars to 200 dollars even four five hundred six hundred dollars even though they look the same so the main difference is specifications obviously the cheaper one you get lower RAM, lower ROM, so it's a slower processor, runs slower, less storage space. Pretty much get what you pay for. So on the back here it says 10 inch, 2 gig and 32 gig ROM, 32 gig of storage space. So I'll consider this like a mid tier. Um, the cheapest one is going to be 1G plus 16 gigabyte of storage space. That's the cheapest tier, runs slow. This one's a mid tier. If you want the best tier, you can get the 4G plus 64 gigabyte of storage space. That's gonna be the fastest processor, but also gonna cost the most. And over the years, I've done a bunch of these uh, double din hit unit installs, so I'm very familiar, but pretty much all these white clips, power, all that stuff, it's all provided. It's all pretty much plug and play. So we just gotta figure out what goes where. All right, so this kit provides a lot of stuff. First up, we have this pry tool, even provided a little screwdriver. So even if you don't have the tools, it's okay. It's all provided, very nice. Some wires, this all plugs into the head unit. That is for your Apple CarPlay. Um, and then your harnesses, I'm gonna plug into your main harness. Yeah, pretty much. Just plug everything in. If you have like a backup camera or if you have like a amplifier in the car, you might have to splice some stuff. But uh, yeah, pretty much everything. This little GPS antenna and little microphone. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this right here. Again, this is your factory harness, which is gonna be what's providing you power when you switch it on. So like I said, same thing. Just find the one, find the size that matches, you're going to clip it on. Alright, just like so, it's all nice and clipped on. And you might notice you have a bunch of other stuff here. This black one, I believe, goes to the power, which goes over here on the head unit. It says power. Um, you have more little dongles. There's just so many stuff you can connect. So. Yeah, let's just figure out where everything goes. So yeah, pretty much you find which wire fits in which slot. The cool thing is everything's all in a different slot, different size. So pretty much pretty straightforward. Which one goes where, you won't really mess it up. 
All right, next we have the GPS wire. It says GPS right here. Remove this little cap. Screw it in. I'll show you guys where to feed the GPS and USB cables later. Pretty easy. So pretty much make sure everything's all plugged into the right spot. Uh, There's an antenna right here. That is from the OEM one. It's pretty short, so before I put the whole head unit back, I want to make sure it reaches and plugs in here for antenna. Uh, we still have the power source right here. Like I said, I'm going to plug in from the factory harness. Alright, so I was looking at the power harness and realized they actually gave two. There's one here and a second one here. So, I'm guessing depending on the year of your Mitsubishi Lancer, some of them is just one power harness. This one has actually two power harness outlets. Um, and looking at my harness right here, I actually have one, two, and three. So, like I said, just find which one, whatever size matches, connect it, and then we should be good to go. All right, we have the factory harness wires all hooked up. Right now we have this one right here. I'm gonna hook it up to power. Oh, and one more thing before you put everything back. Very important, <laughs> your vents, AC vents. So go ahead and clip them back on. Don't need any tools, they clip right on. All right, so you just wanna make sure you know which side is which. The vents face down. And pretty much just clips right in. There you go, nice and secure. And one other thing before you put everything back together and test it out, you also wanna make sure you can route your GPS as well as those uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto wires. So you already have the wires fed through here to the head unit. I'll recommend feeding it over here for the USB to your glove box. What I did was fed it through this side, through this hole, Put my other hand here in the glove box, grab it out. So that way you have your Apple CarPlay Android Auto wires all hooked up here. For the GPS wire, same thing. GPS goes here. Feed it through. You want to feed it underneath through the glove box. Fed it all the way through the side. And I have it attached up here. So that's what you want to do. All right, so we pretty much have all the wires connected. Don't forget, one last one you need to connect. Um, you need to connect the antenna earlier. We forgot to connect it because it's too short. This antenna got to connect to this green spot. So you want to connect that. I'm not going to put everything back yet because I'm going to test out the unit, make sure it works before I assemble everything back together. And before I clip everything down, put everything back together, I just want to make sure it works. So very important step. Go, go ahead and turn on the car. You don't have to start up the car, just turn it to accessory mode, two clicks. See if it powers up, connect your Bluetooth, make sure audio, all that stuff works. All right, so it's on. First startup might take a little while. Android 12. This is a really new setup. On power up, you shouldn't take that long, but this is a very, very first initial startup, so it might take a little bit. Just let it load for, you know, a couple seconds. It's telling you tablet is starting. Very nice. So Spotify, Chrome, YouTube. I'm just gonna click around, see how sensitive this hit unit is. Very cool. And then now let's go ahead and try to connect the Bluetooth. We're gonna make sure the music's working, right? All right, Bluetooth is on with my phone. Right now, searching for devices. Let's go ahead and connect it. There we have it, car Bluetooth is connected. Changes the screen right away. Please connect your phone to this device with USB or Bluetooth. So let's go ahead and try with USB cable, make sure the Apple CarPlay works. Continue setup on your car screen. 
Welcome to Android Auto. Just gonna turn on my Bluetooth. Very cool. And music works, it's a success. Google Maps show up right away. You can go to Spotify over here. I can go to call, I can go back to maps. Very cool. All right, so everything works. I was playing around, making sure I could set your settings. It's really cool, there's so many options on here. You could just slowly swipe through and set it up. Every hit unit slightly different. Your radio, your settings. Yeah, you can even set your sound settings, display settings. There's just so many options you could play with. Um, like I said, this is all still pretty new to me. You can also set up like your audio settings, which I did earlier. Pretty cool. Yeah, there's so many different modes you could play around with. Slowly, you can explore. But uh, yeah, everything works. You guys saw Apple CarPlay, Android Auto works. If you guys are wondering if it's wireless, no, they are wired. But if you want it wireless, what you could do is they sell online on Amazon. These little, you just plug it in like that and you plug into this little AI box and that makes it wireless. Not sure how fast or slow it is, but you know, when you hook it up to the cable, uh, it's usually much quicker. So yeah, everything works good. Let's go ahead and switch the car back off and we can pretty much go ahead and assemble everything back together all right so now we have it sit flush one thing to note whenever you are installing it you want to make sure there's a few white clips in here make sure they all slide right in otherwise you're gonna have your fitment up here not look too clean so yeah pretty good make sure the sides everything fitment looks pretty flush and all that's left to do is pretty much reassemble the body panels back together so easy this one you just have it clipped right here just two screws and then we'll put back that piece another two screws and we're all set all right so all three screws back in place this piece pretty much just clips right on make sure that fits flush make sure this side fits flush and you want to just clip it back on okay, this piece is clipped on everything's in reverse so you're going to go ahead and put this screw back on and then you have this other plastic piece and one last screw and we're all set there we have it all done this screw in one more screw right there club box go back on all good to go pretty easy install if you guys have never done a hit unit install before don't be afraid uh, i've done quite a few on different cars over the years so to me it's pretty easy um, when you get these kits they are plug and play so what that means is no wire splicing you don't have to splice wires you don't have to you know do soldering none of the electrical crazy stuff uh, which I'm not good at but everything's plug and play which means it's meant for the car it connects it is a direct replacement for your factory head unit uh, as you guys saw it sounds great it looks great definitely looks more modern this car is a 2010 with this head unit upgrade it pretty much looks like a updated car and car in today's you know year 2023 so um, aesthetics of the car looks better like I said it sounds better better uh, quality um, if you have an M or subwoofer you can also hook it up you might need some splicing done if you know you have an M or subwoofer uh, if you have a backup camera you can also connect it so all the wires back there that's pretty much what it's all for um, hope you guys like it like I said I would rate this install to me maybe because I've done it a bunch of times I'll rate it a 2 upon 10 um, so yeah it's pretty easy you don't need any tools all you need is a screwdriver uh, everything are clips and uh, install process itself if you know what you're doing you follow this video um, probably takes you like 20 minutes to take everything apart put everything back in less than an hour install pretty easy so yeah hope you guys like it again if you guys are new to the channel make sure to leave a thumbs up if you guys want to check out other DIY videos we have a bunch of DIY videos on the YouTube channel just head to the playlist called how to DIY installation videos bunch of DIY videos whether it's hit unit installs like this dash cam installs front lip installs coilover installs you name it pretty much everything you can find there so thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next video